Composing the music for my films is without doubt the most enjoyable part of my filmmaking. I've been composing my own tunes for most of my life, ever since I was very, very small, long, long before I started my filmmaking. But some of those tunes that I composed at an earlier age, I actually re-recorded and used in some of my films. Here's an example. Sorry to tell you that that was actually me singing. <laughs> I actually cringe at myself when I hear myself singing now. You know, my early stuff and my more recent stuff. But you know, I just enjoy what I do. That tune you may have gathered is called Look at the Rain Dying Away. I was never hot on my lyrics, I have to say, but I was quite good at songwriting, even if the lyrics weren't great. And that tune was created in sort of 1986, 1987 time. And that recording was made in 1987, so just keep that tune in mind. We'll talk about it later on. Some of the music has been in my head for ages, and quite often the music will be representing a place that I've visited. Music always reminds me of places I've visited. So sometimes I've been out for the day somewhere, and then I may hear a bit of music or a tune may come into my head when I'm out. So. If I ever make a film of that place, I have to recall that piece of music to represent that place. It's very important for me to do that. Sometimes I've had no preconceived ideas of music. So when I've made a film of a place where I've had no preconceived ideas, suddenly a theme will come into my head. And often I've actually found that while I've been out filming. So some of the films I've made the actual music has come into my head there and then. So what I've ended up doing is re I've recorded myself, or filmed myself, singing or humming that piece of music so I don't forget it later on. Right, I've just had a bit of inspiration for a bit of a tune whilst I'm here in the North York Moors. Imagine this is in the key of A major. Uh, it'll go la 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 couple of chords are coming to my head, so it's D major, D seventh, and G minor. So it goes D D D D D seventh, G minor, bum ba bum, D D D D seventh, G minor, G minor seventh possibly, D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D D so F minor, da la 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 la, di 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 di. So F minor, O oh, F minor, O oh, B flat minor, O oh, B flat minor sixth. It's actually very difficult to come up with a new theme for every film I make. When you think that how many films I've made so far now, 130 as I'm speaking now. When you think that I'm trying to make a new theme for every different film, it's very, very difficult. So, if I've got those preconceived ideas, that's easier. But if it's a, a place where I have no preconceived ideas, sometimes it can be very, very difficult to create a new theme for that film. But then other times, for whatever reason, a theme just suddenly comes into my head. And a good example is something I did recently. was spending my childhood in Chepstow that, apart from being very musical from a very young age, I started to enjoy going for walks because there were so many lovely walks around Chepstow of course. 
And one of the classic ones, of course, was Office Dyke Path, which started near Chepstow. And I explored quite a few sections, short sections of Office Dyke, when I was growing up in Chepstow. And I think the first time I discovered Office Dyke was when I was walking along this road and turned off this path and I saw this sign. And as I read the sign, I just sang in my head, Offers Dyke Footpath. And that's how that song started. So I created a song called Offers Dyke Path purely from reading that sign and singing it as I read it. So. Offers Dyke Footpath. That's a recording from about 1983, I think it was. But I actually first composed that tune, probably around I don't know, 1977, 78. I was only about 11 or 12. Um, possibly a bit younger than that, I can't quite remember. But yeah, that's how that song started. I was never great on lyrics, but... <laughs> but of course, I later made a Solitary Rambler film about Office Dyke, Mount of Mercia. So I had to have that music in that film. So I re-recorded part of that song in that film. I had to sing it, even though I still cringe when I hear it. But I just had to have that music in that film, because that was what represented Office Night Path. But of course, throughout the majority of the film, I used instrumental versions of that song. It was just in a couple of places I had the bits where I was singing over it, but it was very sparing, thankfully. But as I said, I just had to have that music in that film. Another theme that I created in my head when I was very young was a theme that when me and my family used to go to the Forest of Dean for picnics, I always remember sitting in my granddad's car as he was driving us to Cannock Ponds and to Simmons Yacht. This tune just suddenly came into my head and I always hummed this tune in my head whenever we went to those places again and it was la 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 So that became my melody of the Forest of Dean. And here is a recording I did in 1983 of it. Everybody was singing it, they were all going la 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 And do you know what? That gave me such a kick, and it still does now. It gave me such a kick to know that a theme that I'd created when I was at a very young age had then later become so well known with all the people that heard it. And it's, it's just wonderful that a lot of people that have watched Confrontations in Canop and any of my other Forrester Dean films since, they will remember that theme. And that's just, it's just a wonderful feeling. When I made my first film in the Forest of Dean, which was shot in 1995, and it was called The Mysterious Forest, I decided to create a darker theme to introduce the Forest of Dean. I wanted to create sort of like a, a more sort of eerie atmosphere at first, and then of course I used my melody of the Forest of Dean in the next film after that. But for The Mysterious Forest, I wanted to give it that mysterious feeling, so I just basically created a theme which I called my dark theme of the Forest of Dean. Now when I went back 
of the Forest of Dean in 2018. The first film that year that I made in the forest was New Fancy in Speech House. And I wanted to use that dark theme for the Forest of Dean for that film. But what I didn't want to do was create a dark or depressing atmosphere. So what I first say in that film, this is the Forest of Dean. I then use that theme for that one sequence. And I use a little bit of it afterwards, but then very quickly after that, I then use my melody of the Forest Dean so that I liven the atmosphere up again. Because I didn't want that whole film to be depressing in any way. But it just worked to reintroduce the forest in that film. In my late teens and early 20s, when I was going youth hosteling, I always wrote a song to represent the place I was visiting. So in 1986, when I went to the Peak District, I came up with a song for that particular area. So of course when I made my first film in the Peak District, which was in 2006, called Preamble in Peak, I used that song in that film. And obviously I've used it again, different versions of that same song, in more of my Peak District films. Now there was one song which I partially composed, but then didn't finish it until 13 years later. Now this song was the one that represented Pembrokeshire. When I went to Pembrokeshire Youth Hostel in 1987, when I was walking the Pembrokeshire coast path, I remember coming up with this in my head. But that was part of the verse. I didn't actually compose the chorus until 13 years later, 2000. The reason for that was because I never actually recorded those verses back in 1987, so it never came to anything. But my mother moved to Pembrokeshire in 2000, and she was there for two years. Now, of course, when she was living there, I used to visit her as often as I could. So during my visits to her, I often went off on my own and explored the Pembrokeshire coast again a lot more, and that's when I completed the song. Because, of course, I still had this in my head. Oops. So it was finally when I visited Mum in 2000, but I finished the song, so the song was complete, so I came up with the chorus. So my song was complete. So of course, when I made a film in Pembrokeshire, which was in 2005, I had to use that song. But I'm pleased to say that for all the people that have heard that song, they consider it a, one of my favorite songs that I've actually created. So I was delighted about that. So it worked really well in my Pembrokeshire film. So of course, in that film, there is a whole sequence where I just actually use the entire song where I sing it. In your lifetime. piece of music isn't my own, but people should recognise it. Now I'm sure you all know that that's the theme from Last of the Summer Wine. Now, of course, I made a film in Home Firth where Last of the Summer Wine was shot. And I made that in 2015. So when I was editing that film, again, what I had to do was 
play a bit of the theme from Last of Summer Wine in the film. So in my home for themes I use this, this theme, but then keeping the same feel to the music, I then changed into my own theme, and it went like this. So it kept the flavour of Last of Summer Wine, but that was my own piece of music then. And that's the theme that I actually used throughout the rest of the film. So I'm now going to show you how I create some of my music. Now, I've got some multi-track software, and it's got a pendulum on it. And that makes sure that I keep all the tracks that I record in sync with each other. Two, three, one, two, three. Now, sticking with my Home Firth film, I'll just show you how I recorded part of that theme. So I'm going to record a guitar sound, and I'm going to, go I'm going to throw the guitar sound over on the left-hand speaker, because what I try and do is make sure that all the sounds I record are actually sounding like they are in a surround sound. Okay, so that should be coming out on the left speaker, here, that. So it sounds okay, but obviously I wanted to add something else to that, and I thought, well, what else can I add to that? Let's have a listen and see. So I thought, how about some strings? Strings all sound nice, and I love these VP soft strings, as they're called on my keyboard here. But because I recorded the guitar sound on the left speaker, I'm going to record the strings on the right hand speaker. Again, so that you can hear the guitar hopefully over there and the strings will be over there. So what I ended up doing was this. Let's see how those sound together. So that's how I record my music. I record one sound at a time. And I think, okay, perhaps I can add another sound to that. Bit of bass, we need some bass on that. So you've got those two sounds, so I'm going to have a bit of bass. So let's add a bit of bass to those two sounds that we already recorded. about the music in Last of Summer Wine was also that they use piccolos a lot. So I decided to use piccolo for most of my theme as well. So I thought, okay, 
on top of that, I need something else. So, like. Uh, as much as a piccolo sound as that sounds. I like that. So, let's see how the piccolo sounds with it. say so myself but it's my own piece of music but it's still very much the flavor of the last of the summer wine music and that's why that film really works as well for me because the music is, is works well so that's how I really record my music so I just start with one sound and then add other sounds on top of each other as I go and I always try and throw the sounds in different parts of the speaker so as I say the guitar is on the left side the strings are on the right side the bass was in the middle, piccolo was somewhere in between, so that you're not having all the sounds in the middle or in one place. They're all separated as much as possible. Because if you imagine sitting in a theatre hall and you listen to an orchestra playing, all the, the instruments are in different parts of the stage. So you want to make sure that you hear them around you rather than just in one place. Now in 2016, I created this theme. That's another example of a piece of music that I just think worked. But I thought, well, okay, after I'd actually gone out and shot the film, which was the last of three films I'd made in 2016 in the West Pennine Malls, and this film was filmed around Darwin Tower, I thought, well, I've got to make that sound suitable for the film. That sounds fine, but I thought I can improve on that slightly. So I used the actual voices like this which is a woodwind sound, I thought for the chords, rather than do that, do something else. So, what I ended up doing was just delete the piano sound there, okay, so delete that, and then we'll change that particular string to another string sound, my favourite string sound, so it's this one. So, VP soft again. I, like, I do like that. But rather than doing it like that, I decided to change it altogether. sounds okay but I thought let's have something else. So what I ended up doing was this.
this, I think that sounded really good. But there's still something missing, and I thought I can add another string. So on top of this, I added another string. Okay, so composing a piece of music is all well and good, but I've then also got to make sure it fits in with scenes in the film. So for the Darwin film, for example, I wanted a piece of music that would be dramatic as I approached the Jubilee Tower on top of Darwin Moor. Now, I had to time the sequence where I wanted the music and then record the music to make sure it fitted in with that sequence. So let's have a look at the scene I'm thinking of. Well, here I am, finally, at the Jubilee Tower. So, I've walked up to the tower, and there it is in front of me. So I walk closer to the tower, and I just wanted some music to go over these shots where I first see and approach the tower. Okay, so let's see how I actually record that for that particular sequence. I always record one sound at a time, because it puts me off otherwise. So, I record one string first. Then the second string, I'll I record separately. Now, when I've actually come to record it on the multi-track recorder, here's the first string. So once I've recorded that bit, if I want, when I want to record the, the, the second string, I turn off that string that I've already recorded. So I actually find it puts me off if I've got another sound playing. It's just easy to record one sound at a time and just hear one sound at a time. Okay, so I think we got the idea of that. So once they're both recorded, I can then obviously play them together. Obviously when I'm listening to it, before I recall the next sound, I can then just play another sound, just to see how it sounds. I think that needs a bit of bass. Okay, so I've got my bit of music there, and I think that sounds quite good. So let's see how that sounds when I actually put it on the film. Well, here I am finally at the Jubilee Tower. Okay, that sounds okay, I mean that sounds fine, but I think it's, it needs something extra because it needs to be really dramatic. It's not a case of just like pleasant music, it's like there I am approaching something then BANG! There's the tower. It's got to be dramatic, so I need to add something to that. So what else can I add to that? So I think I'm going to add some piano to add a bit more oomph to the bass. So let's, let's have a listen. Something like this. strings and 
see how the piano sounds with those as well. sound I'm going to add because it just needs something more just really dramatic okay so let's try this organ sound <laughs> Let's add that to the other bits of music for that bit of theme. And then let's see how it actually all fits together and sounds with the scene now. Well, here I am finally at the Jubilee Tower. was when I made my first visit to that area, albeit briefly. And I went through there on a cycling holiday. And the day I was cycling towards the Malden Hills, this theme came into my head. Not a particularly great one, but it was just a theme that came into my head at the time. <laughs> my Malvern Hills films. The first one of course I made in 2014 and I did incorporate this. I'm not particularly that fond of this. However when I went back to the Malverns in 2019, in the first of those six films that I made there's the sequence where I'm looking at Bromsbury Place, and then I get my first sight of the actual main Malvern Hills. So I introduce this theme as I'm approaching the Malvern Hills again. So let's have a look at that sequence where I actually introduce that bit of the theme, just to show that I've established that I'm at the Malvern Hills. Well, I'm now beginning to see the main focal point of what this walk is all about. Films, I did use this very sparingly, but it's really more this that was the best part. Okay, do you remember what I played earlier? That was another theme that I sang in my head as I was 
cycling towards the Malvern Hills. This particular part of the day was when I think it must have started to rain and I was thinking to myself, willing it to stop raining, and I was going, look at the rain dying away, I was saying to myself, and that turned into a tune. Look at the rain dying away. So I recorded that as the song that you've just heard part of there. So again, when I did my recent Malvern Hills films, that was actually the main theme I used in all of those films, or nearly all of those films. But I recorded a better version than what you've heard just there. This is how I played it in, in the films. instrumental piece sound a lot better than that recording you've just heard. So that was really the main theme that you would have heard in nearly all of my Malvern Hills films. But I just did slightly different versions of it in every film. So for the last film, the one where I went around Worcester Shabeek and North Hill, I actually added a rhythm to that to make it sound even better. But here's another theme that I introduced, another version of that same theme that I introduced. listen to it on here. And I thought, okay, the actual tune, the solo, I'll use a little bit of guitar, which I thought was a lovely sound in this. sound, just a bit of nylon guitar, so it was this. So let's see how that sounded in the film with a bit of extra rhythm and some other sounds. some insight as to all the work that I put into making the music for the films, which as I said, is really the most enjoyable part of my filmmaking. <laughs>